Welcome to Ready to Mosh, a podcast all about rock, metal and alternative music. I'm Kev P. And I'm Gem G. Each episode will bring you the latest news, talk about new releases and review gigs and festivals that we've been to. There'll be a smattering of guest interviews and a lot of random chat. As well as podcasts, you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram. Just search at Ready to Moshcast. Hello and welcome to episode 36 of Ready to Mosh. Yep, episode 36 coming at you on the 26th of December. It should be Boxing Day today. Yeah, merry humbug everyone. Yep, hope you're full of cheese and chocolate or whatever floats your boat. Yeah. Probably going to be a slightly shorter episode this week, obviously with Christmas and stuff, not much happening. Well, there's a few bits news-wise, isn't there? But in terms of releases again, it's a fairly quiet one. So it's mainly just news and a review as in a live review i'll review yes the volby skindred napalm death review but first the news the news i've got a couple of festival announcements yeah so first one this was actually about a week ago now but mangata announced some more additions to their festival which is now one day in july at the rescue rooms in nottingham so the kind of big band, as it were, that have been added on really, are the legends that are Raiding Speedhorn. That'll be interesting. Other additions are Tuscar, Harbinger, Sugar Horse, God Eater. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this next one right. A Tota So. So it's A hyphen T O T A hyphen So. And Lost to Light. All right. So is another... how many bands are we up to for that now? Oh, that is a good question. Let's have a quick look. That was like fifteen. All right, okay. So on That's two stages, it's probably fairly full now, I would think. Yeah, I would have thought so. I've got to be about yeah, full. Probably up there with um, what we had last year. Yeah, sounds about right. I'd say, but yeah, like I said, some good additions onto that one, so looking forward to it. What else have you got? There have also been some additions to another small UK festival, which is Call of the Wild, which is in Lincoln, and that is taking place 26th, 27th, 28th of May. Okay. So they have added 20 bands onto the lineup, I believe. Well, that looks like more than 20. They've added quite a lot onto the lineup. Right. So the big ones added to the lineup are Those Damn Crows and the Chris Barris Band. And then the others are Cruel Intentions, Desperate Measures NZ, Rich Raggedy and the Digressions, The Reinforcements, Shadow Smile, The Karma Effect, New Generation Superstars, A Priori. Mercia, Square Wild, Mosquito, Hunch Power, India, Continental Lovers, Dead Writers, Sour Tusk, Goddamn Smile, Star Circus, Ransom, La Vire, La Vire, sorry if I've said that wrong, Wildfire, Baranovic, Dragstrip Guns, and We Three Kings. Okay. And then the press release ends with, with a further announcement to follow in the new year, are we leaving the best for last? Question mark. So. Oh, so have they got another headliner? Yeah, they've got the Saturday headliner still to go. Possibly a few other bands to litter in on the other stages throughout three days as well. So you've got Chris Barris headlining Friday night, Those Damn Crows Sunday. So yeah, it's that Saturday. Saturday slot still free. It's not kind of the big one, as it were, that's still free. Yeah. And then second stage-wise, they've got Ginger Wildheart and the Sinners, Kicking Valentina and Black Spiders. Yeah. So again, some quite strong some decent, Yeah, there. some decent bands there. Yeah. The other thing, festival-wise, I was just going to mention as well, is that Stone Dead won Best Festival at the rockposer.com awards. So these awards, I think they are voted for by readers on the website, fans, etc. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so, I mean, we voted at our Festival of the Year. Yeah. But um, yeah, Stone Dead won that one with the runner-up being Firestorm Festival. I've not heard of that one. Manchester. No, um, I'll just quickly whiz, whiz over some other winners as well, because um, interesting to see. But Best British Band Straight Museum. Museum? Museum. <laughs> We're branching is it, is out. It the, um, <laughs> the British Museum. British Museum? Museum? Yeah, maybe. Best British Band... Band... band. <laughs> oh, jeez. British Band Straight Musician of the Year 22. Mm. Winner was Collateral, who won the Stone Dead opening poll yeah. recently. And runner-up there was Those Damn Crows. Oh, okay. Mm. International Band Straight Musician of the Year, Skid Row, followed by Heat. Have Skid Row done anything? When they download. But we didn't watch them because it's not proper Skid Row. It's not Skid Row, no. It's not Sebastian. Mm. Song of the Year was Massive Wagons, Fuck the Haters, and Runner Up, Those Damn Crows, Man on Fire. Album of the Year was Skid Row, The Gang's All Here, so they've obviously got a new album out. Mm. 
Runner up was Chris Barris Band with Death Valley Paradise. Venue of the year was KK Steel Mill in Wolverhampton. Okay. Runner up was Leo's Red Lion, which I've never heard of. No, don't know that one. No, I don't think I've ever spotted that on a tour poster, so I might have a nose to see where that is. Mm hmm. And then final category is Concert Stroke Gig of the Year. The winner there was White Snake Foreigner Europe, as yeah. in yeah, the whole the, lot the, of the, the, the tour, yeah. yeah. And runner up was Deep Purple. So. Weird. I'm sensing that's a very old rocker kind of Yeah, I was trying to think of how to frame the, <laughs> very the, dab, the audience dab rock vibe. of that. But yeah, it's interesting, isn't it, just to see. You know, like different websites, how yeah. a lot of them have got the same people coming up with album of the year, band of the year, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So nice to see a different perspective on things, isn't hmm. it? So yeah, there we go. And um, yeah, that's me done. Download have announced some more RIP options for uh, 2023. So they've got the Bedouin Mirage for six in Metal Meadow, mm-hmm. which will be kind of to the right side as you go into RIP from if you're coming from the guest area. Yeah, or is Metal? I get mixed up. What's the bit that's like actually under the trees and stuff? That's a bit further, kind of tucked away. Metal Forest, is it? I'm not sure. No. Anyway. Okay. They've got the hotel at Jury's Inn. Do they not normally have juries in? Yeah, they've got, they normally have juries in, but they've yeah. got either released more tickets or they've got okay. more yeah. allocation available. There's the TP Lodge for two in Metal Meadow. Yeah. And there's also the Night Owl, uh, which is en suite. Oh, so what kind of facility, what, not facility, what kind of accommodation is that? <laughs> uh, for, for the Night Owl. Yeah. So the accommodation, what you get in the Night Owl is you get a secure lockable accommodation. So it's like a sturdy... So it's going to be a shed. We're thinking a shed, yeah. Yeah. You get a separate see- sleeping space with a curvaceous supersized bed. A curvaceous bed, you say? Yeah. Oh. Premium mattress with duvet pillows and bedding. Mm. Cushions and blankets. Yeah. You get dressing gowns, towels, mood lighting. Mood light. Light switch. You get blinds. Now, these are, the kind of, these are going to be the key points, mm. apart from the bed as well. You've got a kitchenette with sink, drinks cooler, and coffee machine. That could be a selling point. And you've also got an ensuite bathroom with a shower, which again is another selling point, and a vanity sink with toiletries. There are also plug sockets suitable for charging phones. Okay. However, mm. the cost of this. <laughs> Wait for it. Shall we? I won't do a drum roll, literally, but yeah. imagine a drum roll. <laughs> and obviously, you've got all the normal RIP yeah. access as well. Yeah. But the cost of this is. Four thousand six hundred and seventy pounds. Oh, to put it politely. Yeah. How many is that? So, I you it's a double. So you yeah you'd buy it yeah. for two people. So that comes in at two thousand three three five. I think. Wow. Somewhere around there. And yeah, if you think that we got the early birds for Park Farm. Yeah. Uh, sorry, not Park Farm. Sleepy Hollow. That was about eleven hundred between us. Between yeah. us. So that would mean us paying like an extra three, just over three grand. I can't imagine doing that. I, I mean, it would be amazing. It would be nice. But and they sound almost like, you know, you've got the rock blocks and they're on suite. Yeah. Almost like a bigger version. In my mind, I've not actually looked these up on the website. Have you seen pictures of them? Yes, okay. there was pictures somewhere. I think it was in the email. So in my head, I almost feel like it was. it's a kind of a static caravan park home. You know, I was having a little kitchenette in almost. Yeah. That kind of... Yeah, I, I think it. No, I think it's just like the big, almost like a garden room kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. So but, kind of. But a, a, a very small. A bigger version yeah. of a rock block. Yeah, a bigger version yeah. of a rock block thing. But yeah, it's a, it's a hell of a lot of money. And unsurprisingly, that's not sold out. No. Neither is the jury's in either. Yeah, I mean, I've always thought there's pros and cons to the hotel option. Yeah, the hotel option great for a night's sleep, but you can't go. You know, like I, if there's yeah. nobody I particularly want to watch in an afternoon, I can just sit, yeah. have a beer. Still listen to stuff. Yeah, um, there's the to in and fro in by bus. And it's like the first thing in the morning as well. Okay, you'll get a hotel, cook your breakfast for you. But it's nice sitting outside your tent, isn't it? Yeah, just uh, yeah. if the weather's nice. Because that's the other thing you don't get. You yeah. don't, you don't, for me, I don't think I'd feel part of it. I mean, I suppose there's going to be a lot of people staying in the hotels. So you've probably got a bit of a group yeah. camaraderie, as it were, going on. And like when we got the buses for the pilot, you know, it was quite fun at times, especially coming back, having a sing But Yeah, but that's the other thing. You've got to wait wait for the bus to get you there and back. Because by the end of the day, you just want to get in your bed, even if it is a blow-up bed in a tent. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, I'd I'd never do the hotel option, I don't think. Uh, But the 
I mean, the other one, if it, I mean, it's just so expensive, it but it would be really cool to do. Mm. Yeah, I did actually think about what are the ones that are literally a shed? Crew huts, are they? Yeah. When I was walking through the Christmas market the other day, I was like, they're all the download RIP sheds. They are, yeah. <laughs> Always forget about that. But yeah, that's the latest download news. Yeah, is that it for news? I think so. On to the live review then. So as we said at the start, this is a review of Napalm Death, Skin Dread, Skin Dread, Skin Dread, and Volbeat yeah. at the Motor Point Arena in Nottingham on the 19th of December. Yeah. Which was my birthday. It was your birthday. It was my birthday. Did you have a good day? It was all right. Good. Yeah. Finally got to see a gig on your birthday. Yeah. Had a few beers, had some burgers, and some bands. Yeah. What more do you want on your birthday? Well, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, should we talk about a couple of the things before we get on to the actual review? Yeah. First one I want to mention was the merch situation. Okay, I was going to start with security because that was on the way in. I thought we'd kind of oh, went sorry. Our way. Yeah, I'd forgot about security. Went our way in. Well, it was interesting. It's been a while since we've done. Well, it's not been that long since we've done arena. We were in April, didn't we? Yeah. Definitely a long time since we've done Nottingham Arena, though. So the first thing was like, oh, security are actually outside the venue yeah. before you get anywhere near the door, and there was a full-on metal. Bat going on. I don't know what the technical term is. It's wand. called a wand, yeah. A metal wand to wipe you down, which was fine. Yeah. Obviously. Always makes me chuckle at a metal gig. Yeah. That they do that. <laughs> Must set it off more than any other event. But anyways, that was fine. Then I got my bag searched. Yeah. I was like, oh, can I have a look in there? Yeah, of course I can. How exciting. So she proceeds to have a rummage. And then it's like, what's that? <laughs> it's my lipstick. Can I have a look at it? <laughs> if you want. Can you open it? Okay. It's lipstick. It's like, I was on the verge of saying, you want to try it on as well? <laughs> I thought, better not. Yeah, let's, let's get in first. Yeah, that, that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Why they went down to that minute detail on my lipstick. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a black, shiny coated lipstick case, but I don't look anything out of the ordinary to me. No. Yeah, I didn't get that. Anyone else had that experience at a gig? I've not since Marilyn Manson in the year 2000 when they looked inside my face powder. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that was all fine anyway. Electronic tickets were fine. Got bipped straight in after then, didn't we? Yeah, that all went through all right. Yeah, and then we we got in and, as I was saying, the merch, or lack of. Yes, from what we could see, there were quite a few merch stands about, but they only seemed to have Volbeat. Yeah, I, I didn't see any skins or I didn't see any Napalm Death. I don't know whether it's because it was very near the end of a... Uh, I think they'd done about 36 dates, hadn't they, across yeah. Europe, and this was the second to last. Yeah, it could be that all the merch is gone. Yeah. But it would kind of be nice to know. You know, you know mm. I, the, the, the merch is pretty much gone. And if, you know, I understand not doing any reprints, but... Yeah, it might be. We've always said it before, haven't we? It's worth keeping an eye out on band websites because sometimes they do do a reprint or they have got a few bits left over that they'll post online. Yeah. So, and obviously yeah. then at least the arena aren't taking the court. Well, that's true. Uh, but yeah, still a shame because I do like to, mm. I do like my T-shirts. Yeah. But I got a Volbeat one anyway. Yes, you did get a Volbeat one. Birthday. Next thing up, facilities for the drinks and everything. I yeah. thought that was weird. I've, did you? But yeah, because normally they don't open all of the bars. I think they do, depending on... I've been a lot where they've not. I think it depends on capacity, obviously. Yeah. Mm. But every single one was open, and if you, if you could be bothered to walk for a couple of hundred metres... Mm. And probably actually to where we were sitting, you can yeah. just get a drink straight away. Yeah, I think you normally just make a beeline, don't you? As soon as you walk through the door, if you want a drink, you go to the first bar you see. So yeah, worth bearing in mind. Yeah, it was it was an interesting one, and yeah, I thought yeah, the staff were great yeah. as well. And how you were saying about the capacity, mm. it didn't look sold out. It wasn't fully sold out. There was some space at the top at the back, wasn't there? And the opposite side to where we were. And the opposite side, there were a couple of patches. Yeah, there were some really big spaces. Yeah. But it was, yeah, it was full enough. I think the floor was, by the time Volbeat were on the floor, was full. Yeah, definitely. But to be honest, I think most arena gigs I've been to over the last quite a few years back now, there's been empty patches. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I can't think of a fully sold out arena show. Marilyn Manson? Wembley? Possibly, when was that, 20... Actually, Placebo was in Leeds. Placebo in Leeds, yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway, not, mm. <laughs> yeah. back to Nottingham Arena. Uh, there was something new that I'd not seen before, and I don't think you had either, What's which that? was the pit. Oh, the pit, the, well, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think they were calling it the pit, weren't they? The Oh, what was it called? It had a name, something pit. I can't remember now. Was it's it a snake bit like, pit? No, that's Metallica. I was going to say, it's a bit like Metallica's snake pit. Yeah. Yeah, there's something pit. 
it had a sign on, didn't it? Yeah. So I assume that was the VIP level of ticket. You it got a little was, yeah. special walkway to go straight yeah. in there. Uh, but how it was situated, you've got the main stage in front of you and you are literally in front of the main stage mm. and it kind of does a almost like a V behind you. Yeah, so it's almost like... And in the round stage, but you're in the middle yeah. round bit, aren't you? So the band walking down the runway. Yeah, so they're, they're just, they can, just any of the band you. can walk around you, yeah. Yeah, so you can kind of keep twirling with them. It's okay, but I don't know if I'd have felt a little bit trapped in there, you know, because it, the stage is quite high above the you. The stage is very high above you. And know. also, if you just get a couple of tall people right in front of you, you know, like normally in a standard situation, you can wheedle around a bit and yeah. change your view. You've not got a lot to go on there, have you? No. I did notice there were mm. some slight raised areas. Yeah. But the other thing as well is like how I mean your neck's gonna be aching after that because you're, you're just literally doing, looking you're literally right up, aren't you? Looking vertically, yeah. yeah. And yeah, so I I much preferred the seating for that. Yeah. But the downside about the seating is the sound quality. It wasn't great, no. no. I've never known it be great in that arena. No, I think about the best was probably EC and either nine inch nails or pumpkins. I would say nine inch nails. But we were quite central yeah, on the floor. Mm. And then Pumpkin's audio was good, but mm. we were very close. Yeah. But yeah, like like you say, it's not an arena that's built for music. And a lot no. of arenas aren't known for the sound quality. No, but it, but it seemed particularly bad. Yeah, but that could have been where we were sat, like you say. What will be interesting is to see when we go see Gajira there in a couple of months. Yeah. We've got pretty much similar seats, but on the opposite side. Oh, yeah, of course. So yeah. it would be interesting to compare, perhaps. Yeah. That is. But... See what happens there. But yeah, the um, I noticed that the sound quality for Napalm Death was really bad. It was... Part of me wasn't sure if that was just them, and I don't mean because they <laughs> they sound bad, but that style of music, I don't Maybe know if that would suited. ever no, I... lend itself to an arena anyway, if you know what I mean. I, I don't think it was that. I just, it was as if the bass was too high, the mm. treble wasn't high enough, yeah. and... It sounded almost as if they'd only sound checked for Volbeat and nobody yeah. else. They definitely did sound check for Napalm Death because they put pictures of it on their Instagram though. So. Oh right. It just, it, yeah. just from where we were it didn't mm. feel like it had been sound checked yeah. properly. And yeah, with Skindred there was a at the start of Skindred it didn't seem right either. No, even when Benji was speaking as well, it was almost it was very a bit distorted. Garbled. Yeah. yeah. And again I was like, is it where we're sat? Is it just can't tell what he's quite saying? Yeah, I think it was the audit because as it yeah. went on, it got better. Mm. And then when Volbeat were on, it was fine, it was mm. crystal clear. Yeah. So, yeah, I, th- I think it was the sound yeah. of the venue. So, no palm death anyway. Yes, first time seeing them. Yeah. Glad I've ticked them off. Yeah, same. As we've just mentioned, I don't think they suited the arena setting. It's good that they were there yeah. to add some diversity into the mix, I guess. A bit of It, it was something very different to, yeah. to have. The, the leap from Napalm Death to Skindred yeah. is quite big, but then to go from Napalm Death to Volby yeah. is insane. <laughs> it was. So, I mean, I'd, I'd watch them again at festival, probably. Yeah, I'd be the same. I'd, yeah. I'd like to see them again, and hopefully with a, a better audio quality. Yeah. But yeah, glad I've seen them. They did a good mix of songs. Yeah, th- yeah, there was some classics on there. F- Factoid, Scum, Amoral, yeah. uh, The Kill. Yeah, and they seem to be enjoying themselves. Yeah. It amazes me that the lead singer is older than me. He's 53, yes. and he looks about 12. I was going to say he looks about 12. Doesn't look very old, but I, I, I did enjoy watching Napalm yeah. Death. They were good. They had a bit of crowd interaction going on, but although we've said it was good to get that kind of different band, I don't think they necessarily were um, appreciated by all the crowd. <laughs> No, but he, just kind of people we were sat near are a bit like, well, why is this? And that's the problem when you have quite different sounding bands as support, isn't it? I guess. Yeah. But they got on and they just did their stuff and that was fine. And yeah. They finished with a Dead Kennedys cover, Nazi Punks Fuck Off. Yes. Which was good. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it was incredibly fast, incredibly hard, but yeah, really enjoyable. Yeah, and they and they actually did more songs than Skindred, but obviously song length wise. Yeah, you can you can blast through an Apalm Death exactly. song quicker than Skin Drugs. Yeah, so. so they had like the shortest set, but the second highest number of songs. Yeah. On to Skin Drugs, then. Yep. The sixth time we've seen them, I think. I think it is, yeah. Yeah. First time in an arena. First first arena time, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, done festivals, their own shows, and now supporting an arena. Um Skindred. Yeah, they were skin drugs. What can you say? They were what, great. They were as great. Always. Yeah. Benji was on form, as always. Yeah, I've never known any lead singer get so pumped for every single gig. 
Yeah. It's like every time, well, bear in mind, like you said, they're at the back end of the tour. Mm. And you could, you'd expect energy levels to be flagging. Yeah. After doing it so long, for so many days. And it's, it's yeah. just like it was day one for him. Yeah. He put on Instagram, I think, after the last show in Wembley. Mm. I think it's about nine and a half weeks they've been on tour for. That's Jesus. a long time, really, isn't it? With all that traveling as well. But yeah, yeah it was definitely still up for it. And yeah. he always gets the crowd going. And whereas, again, there might have been people who would not necessarily be into Skindred before Volbeat. Yeah. He got the crowd going, joining in, singing along. Yeah. Doing the movements. Doing the movements, doing the whoop whoop for That's yeah. My Jam. Yeah. They only actually did eight tracks. It felt longer. It did feel a lot longer. And two that. of those were new tracks, which was interesting. On such a, such a short set, playing as a support band as well. What were the... I know they played Give Me That Boom. Yeah, and L-O-V-E, Smile Please. Oh, okay. So that's a new one. The new album, which I don't think is out till... It's out next August, year, isn't it? I think. Yeah. I thought it was April. Might be April then. A month with an A in the name. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go is it, okay, it's one of those ones. It down. <laughs> but yeah, came on to stand for something. Yep. Obviously straight into Rat Race. That's my job. That's my job. My, fa- my along. absolute favourite. Whoop, yeah. whoop. Yes, tried not to do my rock fit moves to it. I was kind of twitching a bit. May have raised my hands a bit. <laughs> the downside of being in seats if people behind you aren't standing, you just have yeah. to kind of wiggle about. <laughs> then they did L O V E. Yep. And then which, Kill the Power. Yeah. And again that got everyone joining. Yeah, in, love Kill it? the Power. Give me the give me that boom went down really well it actually. Did. That I think from the moment I heard it as a track, I thought that's gonna be a good one live. Yeah. And it it does work live really yeah. well. It, it is just a great yeah. kind of one like you say, to get people going. It's, yeah. Sing along. In the back of my head, it always feels a bit boom, shake the room <laughs> from the 90s. <laughs> Not that it sounds anything like it. I just get that, you know. That vibe. It reminds me of a school disc. <laughs> um, nobody. Yeah. Which I love. And then um, warning. So yeah. we all... We all had to need for helicopter. Obviously, not everyone did. I think you could tell the people who knew Skindred. Yeah. Particularly in the seated areas. Yeah, there, there was there were some people that it was definitely their first time watching. Yeah. They were like, obviously, it gets you to put your... Chose an item of paraphernalia up first. Yeah. Gets you to hold almost like Corey does when he makes you yeah. crouch, that kind of thing. But um, I did stand up for that one. Hopefully I didn't hit anyone behind me with my T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, you got you got spotted standing up. Everyone was there. I would <laughs> I would have sat down and you put helicoptered, but someone else on the road was doing it. So okay. I was like, you know, All it's right. one song. It's one it's section one of a song, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> You're clearly not bothered about yourself. Watching no. it, or you'd be joining in, wouldn't you? Exactly. Yeah. You just sat there going, "What's this going on? Why are people holding something up? What's going to yeah, happen? happening now?" Because <laughs> when you think about it, if you've never seen a Newport helicopter before, you would be a bit like, "What the fuck's going what on?" Says, yeah. What, what's about to happen? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's some shaky footage because I was helicoptering with one arm and filming with the other, <laughs> and also yeah. ending to that set. Only eight songs, but an yeah. amazing set. Yeah. And I could happily watch Skindred every week. Mm. And then we had about a half hour break, didn't we, just to stock up on refreshments and facilities? Yep. And then it was into Bolby. Into Bolby, yes. The other thing, actually, just when we were talking about the general stuff about arenas, I think I've mentioned this at some point before, but the one thing I do love about an arena gig is when the lights go off, because it's just much more of an impact, isn't it? Feels it feels an like, impact, oh, yeah. It's got dark. <laughs> yeah, I get what you mean. And then the stage itself is obviously so much brighter, so you just get that contrast. Yeah. I'm just a bit more excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Like when you do get like curtain drops or if you yeah. like you say it blacks out then it, yeah. it does have more impact in a small venue you, you don't get the same do you no no because just because of the, the lighting positioning yeah. and everything else yeah yeah but anyway so yeah nine o'clock Volbeat were on came on to the devil's bleeding crown as expected yep which was an awesome opener and i'll be honest so Volbeat were good but really not my thing i'd kind of when Volbeat were on, I definitely lost interest. Just, mm. just and it's nothing against Volbeat. It's just I'm not into Volbeat. Not my band. Not yeah. really fussed. I think they played about three songs that I know, but I couldn't tell you the titles. Okay. That, <laughs> you know the how, Devil's Bleeding Ground, don't you? I think I do. Yeah. I think you've said you don't mind that one. Uh, well, that's pushing it? it a bit, but yeah, everything just sounds very. <laughs> and that is Kev's impression of Volbeat. <laughs> yeah. Won't be forming a covers band anytime soon. I will admit there was one bit that I thought was really good. Yeah. And I think that was the instrumental becoming. Yeah. Yeah, it was a really good instrumental. It was really heavy. Yeah. I thought if you if they played like this, yeah. I'd, I'd probably like them. Yeah. But I think it's a mixture of they're a bit too slow for me and mm. the voice is the voice just kinda of goes through me a bit. Okay. 
Yeah, Michael has had a cold actually for the last few days. I remember seeing wherever they played Friday, was that Leeds or Manchester? Somewhere anyway. And people were saying, oh, he's got a cold. And I was starting to get a bit panicked then. Like, oh, no, is it going to cancel? Is it going to cancel? Yeah. And then I knew they got somewhere else on Saturday, yeah. which may or may not have been Leeds or Manchester, I don't know. And then a day off before us, so I was like, hopefully. It'll recover. It'll be fine. Yeah. And, yeah, it was all good. I, I still think he did a good job vocally. You couldn't really tell. No, but I, I mean, I think I've seen Volbeat before. You've seen them at download at least once, yeah. if not twice. And, yeah, vocally, I couldn't. If he'd not mm. said that he'd got an issue, I wouldn't yeah. have noticed it. No. He'd, and his voice really holds out. He, you yeah. know, he's got a really good voice, but, mm. I mean, like I say, you know, it's just not for me. Yeah, anyway, so they did about 16 songs in total. Definitely had some highlights. Lola Montez, which was very hard not to stand up and dance to. <laughs> okay. Um, straight into Four of Eat. So I was like, right, I'm done now. They're my favourites. Right. <laughs> not really. Wait a Minute, My Girl. like that one. Seal the Deal. Is another one that's difficult to sit down to. <laughs> and Last Day Under the Sun as well. And then they did Devil Rages on before the encore, and quite a long encore, actually. Yeah, it did seem to go on. I mean, I don't know if that was to be willing it to end. No, I was but... surprised when they went off kind of as soon as they did, whether they've moved it around a bit because of Michael's cold or something, mm. I don't know, maybe. Give a bit of a break. But, um, yeah, they did four songs on the encore. Who did we see recently that did that as well? And we were like, oh, that was a long encore. You remember us saying in a review? Was it Death Blooms? No, sorry, not Death Blooms, um, Bad Flower. Could have been. I think Bad Flower did a long encore. Did they? They did a pretend encore. Yeah, and we, it was like five, six songs. Yeah, so then they came back on to Let It Burn, did Die to Live, Pool of Booze, 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 Ah. Yeah. And finished with Still Counting, which I expected them to finish okay. with again. Is that, is that what they normally end with? I then? think that's what they did at Download this year. Yeah. So it seems kind of part of the same Similar sound. tour. Similar really but yeah they played everything i wanted them to play that's good because we were at the side we didn't get kind of the full impact of the stage set up, no did we? but towards the end they had some kind of the flames going on they got no it was uh, smoke more smoke well there was lots of smoke poofs yeah yeah so they got smoke rising up in jets from the stage at various points throughout various wasn't points, and as yeah. they went around the track they and they got the not glitter guns the um, cannon yeah, confetti the cannon. confetti cannons. Yeah, that going. towards the end, wasn't there? Yeah, pa- well. apparently that was absolutely everywhere. Well, it always is, isn't it? There's probably some bits floating down now. It probably is, yeah. There always is a loose bit of confetti, isn't there? But yeah, we didn't quite get the impact of any kind of effects on the screens, which is the downside of sitting to the side, I guess. Yeah. But we're still good. And so, they're not an overly visual band in that respect. No, I, d- I, don't I feel think. like with some bands you don't really need that. Yeah. Like yeah, if you, if you just if, a rock up and play band, really, yeah. aren't they? Plug in and play. <laughs> yeah. With the backdrop. Old yeah, school. it's like if you were going to watch, I don't know, Tool, or if you were yeah. going to watch Nine Inch Nails, yeah. you need to be able to take it all in. It's mm. it's an audio and a visual experience. Yeah. But yeah, like you say, they're, they're very much plug and play. It's like it doesn't matter. They can just yeah. kind of go. But I did like that they got the, the stage set up, the, the track going round the runway. Yeah, it made it interesting. It did, because then you could see the band just moving around the whole yeah. time, really. And it, it kind of, it gave, from where we were sat, it mm. gave us an opportunity to see if that's what we'd want to do at some point. Yeah. And, I mean, it'd have to be an unbelievable band for me to want to do that. Mm. But, I don't, but I don't know who I'd do it for. That, that would play like the arena. Mm. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. So, it's so like if it was Ghost, it wouldn't work because no. of the, like you said, the stage setups. You'd probably want it to be for, I think it worked for somebody like Metallica. For yeah, instance, so who do have a have lot of movement. That, yeah. and I think when I saw it might have been there where I saw Def Leppard and Motley Crue and they didn't have the like the The V. The V, but they did have a bit of stage coming out. Yeah. Got a vague recollection of seeing a piano on the end of it or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's good to just have a bit of interest because an arena show can be a bit dull if it's not a very visual band. So yeah. it just gives them even though they're just wandering around and interacting a bit differently, it just gives a bit more Life to the show. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something different, isn't it? Yeah. And although it was big and high, it doesn't really cut into capacity, no. I don't think. No, I don't think it did, really. I, don't, I think the capacity difference was minimal. Yeah, it obviously, obviously the arena, it a bit, yeah. but then... But the arena obviously makes more yeah. money because of the ticket prices for that bit. Yeah, because they've got the VIP section. Yeah. So, overall thoughts? It was an awesome Who night. were your favourite? Who were your favourites of the three? It's difficult. Well... Napalm or is it Death, all for different reasons? Napalm Death is my least favourite. Yeah. Just because I'm less familiar with them, I listen to them less. 
Mm-hmm. But they're all right. Yeah. And then it's hard to compare Skindred and Volbeat anyway, because I love both of them, but they are very different styles of music. Yeah. It was good to see Volbeat do their own show, because I've only seen them a download before. Yeah, so that's true. I've, I've not thought about that. Do yeah. that. Yeah. It's good to see them, obviously, having grown up to an arena size band themselves as well. Yeah, from where, mm. from, I mean, from, when did you first see them? I think download 20, is it 17 or 18? So, and that was that, that was main stage. stage. Oh, main stage. Yeah, okay. I've seen them on main stage twice, but obviously they've they've worked their way up to arenas. Yeah, the the probably getting towards the point of a potential headliner. Then. Yeah, I would say so. so maybe a headliner yeah. within. I don't know what they've if they've got a new thing out at the moment or if it's well next. that was that current album. Well, yeah, possibly, maybe not next year. Maybe twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four possible. Could be. Mm. Yeah, it's a weird one as well because it's one of those like you expect. Well, we don't necessarily, but when someone asks you who you've seen at an arena, they expect it to be someone they know, even though they're not necessarily into that kind of music. <laughs> so they're like, oh, never heard of them. Oh, and they're playing an arena. <laughs> yes. I found that more people seem to know Skindred are than Volby. I found more people knew Napalm Death. Like when I was um, saying to people at work, two people who I'd never expect to have heard of any of those bands, but they'd heard of Napalm Death. But to they've be been fair, around. N- long Napalm time. Death have been going since the 80s. And they're so. a bit kind of. A notorious name almost, aren't it, they? <laughs> yeah. I think people know the name, but they don't necessarily know. Yeah. And they just know it's hard yeah. and heavy, but they and don't the, know what yeah. they sound like. But the people who say this just expect everything I listen to to sound like that, I think. Yeah. They just think, oh, music guitars, it's just loud and shouty. Not always. No. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the Vol Beat review. Yeah. Right, as we said at the start, it's a shorter episode this week, so we've not got a specific recommendation for you. Just a little reminder to go and check out our recommendations playlist where we've got, I've lost count of how many bands on there now, but it's heading up for, well, (laughs) 40 tracks, 20 bands roughly, I think. Yeah, it's around there. It's around there. There's a lot of bands on there, so if you wanted something new to listen to, the link is on our bio on our social media, which will take you to the Spotify Spotify playlist. To check that out so go do that yeah thank you for listening then i guess as always this is our last one of the year i think yeah it will be well will be. maybe maybe we'll see there, we'll see there may be some bonus apps there may be but we're not we're, we're, we're not, not holding ourselves to that we'll see how the break goes yeah so thank you to everyone who's listened to us throughout the year since we started in may yeah it's been a long time it has if you're not already following us on our various social medias you can find us at at Ready to Mosh Cast on Twitter and Instagram. Ready to Mosh on Facebook, TikTok and YouTube. Do please give us a like, share, follow, review, etc. Whatever you can to support the podcast. And if we don't come up with anything as a bonus episode in the next few days, then we'll be back in the new year. On the second. Yes, with our review of 2022. And I can finally start saying this year when I mean next year. <laughs> I'll just be even more confused with last year then, won't I? <laughs> you will. More cheese, Moog. <laughs>